There's a few channels on YouTube that have already made an inductance meter and because I don't like recycling topics, I'm going to make my project different in two major ways. The first one is by using the internal comparator of the Atmega 328P and the second one is to use the timer directly and not use the function pulse in that uh, most people use from the Arduino library. This is because I find Arduino functions to be somewhat bloated and I think we can do a lot better by using direct timer manipulation so that we can collect multiple samples from our oscillation and have a more precise measurement. The principle of operation is quite simple. We have an LC circuit that's composed of a capacitor that's fixed and the inductor that we're trying to measure. We start by giving a short current pulse through the inductor and this makes the LC resonant tank ring and then we measure what the period of oscillation is and with that and the value of the known capacitor that's always fixed we can deduce what the inductance value is. If we read the data sheet under the chapter of the analog comparator we can see that it can be directly connected to the timer counter 1. This means that the square wave generated by the analog comparator will signal the capture event to the timer counter 1 which will be used to measure what the period is. Here we can see the schematic. D1 is going to pulse the base of the transistor very quickly and this will let current flow through L1 which is our unknown inductor. We decouple it through C3 and we rebias it to uh, half of VCC or two and a half volts. Then we put two diodes to be sure that it doesn't go higher than a little bit over five or lower than slightly under zero to not burn the A7 input pin. And this is going to connect to our analog comparator inside the Arduino. Then D6 is going to be the non-inverting input of the comparator and we need this to be at the same DC level as A7. Now I already explained what happens inside the Arduino and uh, the LCD is connected to the side and will be controlled by the Arduino obviously. So here you can see I built the circuit on a breadboard and the only thing that's left is to program the Arduino. Okay so it's time to write the code. I'll make the text a little bit bigger so that people watching on their phones can see it well, hopefully. And the first thing I'm gonna do is define some constants. FCPU is for the delay library and the others I will be using in the main file. Next we include some libraries. The lcd.h library is one that I found online and I'll put a link in the description to find it. Just know that I modified it a little bit to speed it up and to customize it a little bit. At this point I'll declare some variables that I'll use throughout the code and I won't stay here and explain them because you'll see how I use them and what they're for. So now we get to the main function and the first thing I do is declare pins A0 to A5 as output so that we can control our LCD and the next thing I do is to initialize and clear the LCD and write something on the screen. Next I declare pin D1 as output and this is the pin that will be driving our base of the transistor. Bit 7 of the SREG register is going to enable all the interrupts basically so we can write that to one and next we want to set up our analog comparator. The ACD bit inside of ACSR enables the analog comparator and the ACBG bit inside of ACSR disables the band gap reference. Next we enable the analog comparator multiplexer by setting the bit ACME to one in the register ADCSRB. We disable our ADC by writing a zero to the bit ADEN in the ADC SRA register. Because I want to use pin A7 as the inverting input to the comparator, I will use the ADMUX register to select this input. The last thing to do is set up our timer one and we can do that by writing a one to the bit ACIC or the input capture enable to the ACSR register. Then we set our prescaler to 1 in our TCCR1B register. After that we disable power reduction to the counter by writing a 0 to PRTIM1 in the power reduction register. 
At this point, I decided to activate the noise cancelling, which I don't think makes much of a difference, but we can do this by writing a 1 to ICNC1 in the timer counter control register 1B. And the last thing we do is enable the interrupt in the counter by setting 1 to the bit input capture interrupt enable 1 in the TIM SK1 register. And we finally got to our main loop. So here the first thing I'll do is put a delay of half a second. Then we can set our flag to zero. And this flag is going to increase every time we receive a capture event by the analog comparator. And then we write port D to one. So we activate the transistor. After this, we need a short delay of about 250 nanoseconds. And I'm going to do this by inserting three assembly no-op instructions. At this point, we reset our counter value and we write a zero to our output pin D1. And this is going to start the oscillation essentially. And while this happens, we wait for one tenth of a second. And during this time, the analog comparator will be triggering the timer one, which in turn will call the interrupt service routine, which we will write later. So at this point, we have all our values inside the array, and we need to understand what they mean and calculate the value of our inductor. The first thing I do is set divisor to the number of elements in the array minus one, and this I'll use later to calculate the average delay or the average period of oscillation. And then dmax and dmin are set to their extremes, basically. So now with the for loop, we can go through all the values in the array and try to understand and extract some information from it. The first if condition essentially checks if the value is zero. And if this is the case, then it changes divisor so that we know that the value that was zero doesn't count and we can calculate the average based on a fewer number of samples. If the value in the array is not zero, then we check what the difference between it and the one before it is. So basically we check what the maximum difference or period value is and we update dmax which is the maximum delay and then we do the same thing with the last if condition but we check uh, what the minimum delay is then we calculate what the average delay between two samples is so the average period of oscillation and we do that by taking the difference between the last and the first variable in the array and dividing it by the divisor variable then I calculate what the square of the average delay is, or the average period, and I store this in a separate variable. Then I put the constant that I defined at the beginning into a variable so that this can be manipulated during this loop. So at this point, we have to calculate what the inductance is, and I'm going to use fixed point arithmetic for this, because as far as I could find on the internet at least, the Arduino Nano doesn't have an FPU or a floating point unit. So it's not that we can't use floats, but I just want to try not using them. And if we look at the formula for frequency with an LC circuit, we have uh, the following and we can just flip it around to have the period. And at this point, knowing what the capacitor is, we can flip it around for the inductor as a function of the period. Now, because we're using a clock with uh, 16 megahertz to count in the counter or the timer, we're going to actually get a value of the period, which is uh, 16 million times uh, what the actual period is, obviously. So based on that, we can modify our formula to uh, work as a function of the period found by the counter. And we can uh, put everything in the denominator, and we find this to be the constant that we defined at the beginning of the code. So going back to the calculation of the inductance, I'm going to calculate it once, and this is going to give a result in Henry's, so no uh, powers of 10. And because I want the value of the inductance to be around 100 to 999, so that if it's, uh, for example, let's say 450 micro Henry's, then I want 450 in my variable. And if I have two and a half micro Henry's, I want the variable to be uh, 250 and then we can uh, display it correctly afterwards. I'm going to loop through uh, a series of calculations of the inductance that uh, keeps calculating the value of the inductance by uh, dividing the denominator by 10, so a power of 10, 
and it sees if it's in the range that we want. So if it's at least 100, and every time it increases power, the variable power, to keep track of how many times it uh, multiplied the inductance by 10 to receive that result. So there was a bug that was happening that took me a while to figure out, uh, where basically because of a rounding error, it would actually go from around 10 up to 1000 when it should have been 999 or something like that and so it screwed up my decimal point and uh, I'm just going to add this extra check that in case it gets to 1000 it uh, understands sees it and divides it by 10 and decreases uh, the power variable and the next thing we want to do is use the sprintf function to convert the variable into a string so that we can easily display it on the LCD so before writing the variable on the screen, we actually have to uh, place the decimal point in the correct place. So to do this, we check whether it's a multiple of three, uh, the power of the inductance is. And if it's not, we loop through the whole string and uh, essentially calculate how far back we have to go through the string and uh, shift all the digits that are actual decimals up by one place and then we place the dot character in the right place to have the right decimal point. At this point it's time to display the variable on the LCD and uh, so I clear the LCD and put the cursor where I want it and then I do a quick check to see if the value that we got is actually reasonable based on some of the parameters that we calculated or if it's actual trash and it should not be displayed. So I check whether the minimum of all the periods that we found is less or equal to the average because if it's not means something went wrong. And then I check that the average is smaller than the maximum. And then I check that the minimum is greater than zero because otherwise it would be kind of strange. And then I kind of do a calculation of the spread, let's call it, to see how much the minimum and the maximum values of the periods uh, are different, basically, proportional to what the average is. And here I made a small mistake. It should actually be uh, greater or equal than delta max. And delta max, I also made a mistake, is uh, 20 and not 40. So if you're writing this, you can correct it. And so at this point, we can finally write the value to the LCD and follow it with the right prefix, so nano henrys, micro henrys, or milli henrys, based on what the power that we found uh, is, so the power of 10. If the parameters that we previously set were not met, then we can write that it was open, so meaning no inductance was connected, or we can write error because this basically means that it did find there was something, but um, it was wrong, it was probably not calculated correctly, so it will avoid giving a false measurement. And the last thing we do is reset to zero all the contents of the array for the next measurement. So now I tried uploading the code and it wasn't working and it's because I forgot to write the interrupt service routine. So we can do this right here and this is the routine that gets called every time the timer gets an input capture event. So what happens is this function gets called and if the flag is zero, which it is initially, then it resets the counter. And uh, if it's not zero, so it's already been called for this measurement, then it uh, assigns the value inside the counter to our array. And then it just increments the flag variable to keep track of how many times it's been called and how full the array is. And if it gets to the maximum length of the array, then it just discards the value and uh, just goes on. Finally, we can compile and upload our code. And we can see that it's uh, working properly. I have a couple inductors here. One is a known 5 microhenry inductor. The first measurement is pretty much spot on. And if we try our next ones, we can see we get about 400 and something microhenries. And the even bigger one gives us almost 800 microhenries. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any millihenry range inductors, and it doesn't measure anything in the nanohenry range, which is uh, definitely uncommon to have anyway. It would just be like a couple loops of wire with an air core. But I have to say, I'm really happy with the result. Let me know what you thought about the code explanation. It was a little bit long, but uh, the alternative was to just uh, skip it and let people interpret it themselves, which isn't easy in my opinion. I hate trying to understand other people's codes. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.